Appreciate that. Good, good. A girl sung out in revival up to rise out, and I think it's in West Virginia, and I tore me all to pieces. Lord have mercy. I thought, buddy, when it comes time to die, you can give me Jesus. Amen. Amen. You can keep the concert in New York City. Give me Jesus, brother. Give me Jesus. And one of these days you're gonna need him, friend. You'll need him bad. And we're glad that they're here. And also some of the folks uh, they're visiting with uh, Miss June and uh, Jeff. Back there, visiting with us from Michigan this morning, too. Y'all make them welcome. And uh, anybody else, maybe I don't know you, but we're glad you're here and you just get a blessing this morning. All right, take your Bible down, turn to the book of Romans, chapter number five. I want you to look at this scripture here with me this morning. Romans, chapter number five. And I want to jump in here and read some scripture this morning uh, and bring you the message. Um, Romans, chapter number five. While, while you're turning there, don't forget now, we need, uh, we need uh, bus drivers, we need bus workers. If anybody wants to get their bus drive license, it's easy to get, we'll help you. Well, I won't say it's easy, but it, it, you, can get it, you can do it. And um, uh, so we need that. If you would help us out, sure appreciate it. Appreciate it. Life's short. Life's short. Better do something for God while you can. You're moving fast. Romans chapter 5. Now, the book of Romans written around 58, 59, 60 A.D. So the Lord hadn't even been gone back to heaven but uh, 20, 20 something years when Paul, by the Spirit of God, wrote Romans. And the book of Romans is, has 16 chapters. It has 433 verses. 
It has 9,422 words. It teaches that a person is saved by grace through faith plus nothing. And it reveals some of the great New Testament doctrines. Listen to these words that the book of Romans talks about. One of the ways you know we're spiritual desolate in America today is because the preachers on TV very seldom, if ever, mention words like this. They talk about you being awesome and come to faith and stuff like that. Here's the Bible words. Adoption, salvation, redemption, sanctification, predestination, justification, regeneration, and glorification. Every one of those are great studies in a Christian's life. You should be familiar with them. Uh, we are, uh, you talk about a theological ex education, you learn what them five or six words mean in an I-O-N and you'll know more than 90% of the people go to church in this world. Verses seven, uh, chapter one and verse 17 and chapter five, verse one, got old Martin Luther out of a Catholic monastery over in Germany and got him right with God and began the Protestant Reformation, y'all. Verses in the book of Romans. So Romans is a tremendous book. And here I want to bring out something here today and bring you a message about being saved. And it says this. Look at verse 15. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. You see them two words there? That's what I want you to look at. Free gift. For if through the offense of many, a one, many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. 16. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift, there it is again, the free gift is of many offenses to, unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of our judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift, there it is again, and that's something, three times, came upon all men unto justification of life. You guessed it. I'm gonna preach this morning on the subject, the free gift, the free gift. And the free gift of God, the Bible said, is eternal life. You imagine, imagine a, a person comes in with a great big gift and it's all wrapped up with wrapping paper with a bow on it, real pretty paper, and it's got your name on it, to so-and-so, whatever your name is, put your name on there. And they give it to you and inside that is eternal life in heaven forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. That's what the Bible says salvation is. You know why I'm saved this morning? I accepted God's free gift. I accepted God's free gift. Let me say a few things about a gift this morning. First of all, salvation is a gift. The Bible said in Romans 6, 23, uh, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. In this world, most gifts have strings. In other words, nowadays, if somebody gives you something, usually there's some strings attached. Ain't that right? Uh, you you got to watch out for people who give you something nowadays. You know, uh, uh, There's usually something tied to it. Like the lady come into church one Sunday morning. She had a diamond about that big around. And all the ladies said, oh, my goodness. Oh, my. That is the most beautiful diamond. Where did you get that? She said, that's the famous Johnson diamond. And it comes with a curse. They said, really? What's the curse? She said, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> now look, that's what a lot of gifts are in this world. You get them, and they say something, well, you're going to pay them. It's like all this free money the government's giving us. You don't really think that's free, do y'all? You know, uh, listen, if the government ever gives you something, they're going to come back one day and say, okay, now we get to tell you what to do because we give you free money. When you needed it, you didn't make it on your own. Don't you think for a second we ain't going to pay big time, big time back. That's not a free gift. Now, a gift is, a gift is a something that you don't earn. You don't do enough to get it. You don't work enough to get it. If you do, it's not a gift. It's not a gift if you do that. Um, 
I mean, let me illustrate here just a second. I need, uh, Jeffro, come up here and help me just a second. Yes, you sit right there, and I'm going to give him, I'm going to give him a gift, okay? I, uh, I'm walking down the street one day and say, how you doing, everybody? Uh, you one of them homeless people? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, he's, uh, he, he's got his sign or something like that, and I say, all right, Jeffro, I have something that I'm going to give you. I have here a $10 bill. $10. $10 is $10. And I'm going to give you this gift. What's he got to do? Take it. That's all he got to do. Now, what if he says, how much I owe you for that? I think mean, nothing. It's a gift. If he says, Brother Danny, do I have to pay you back? I say, no, it's a gift. You know, if you give something to somebody, it's theirs. If I give him, which I didn't, it's just okay, <laughs> that $10. <laughs> uh, let's leave, uh, that's right. Uh, if, I, if I give, just illustration, if, if I give him $10, you ever heard anybody say, we was dating and we was going to get married and, um, and then we broke up and he called and said, I want my ring. I always told my girls, that I want my ring back. What do you mean your ring? What are you talking about your ring? If it's to give it to somebody, it ain't yours. Right? That's right. If you give somebody something, it's there. Well, if we break up, I want my ring. It ain't yours if you give it to her. You Indian giver. That's what they call that. And if I give him that $10... It's his. There is nothing he can do. It's an insult to me for him to say, I've got to do pretty good or Brother Danny had wanted to. It's, it's unconditional. It's unconditional. There's no conditions on it. I'm not going to say, I'll give you this $10, but you've got to clean the church. I'll give you this $10, but you've got to uh, uh, drive a bus. I'll give you this. No, it's an unconditional gift. If you do something to get it, it's not a gift, people. If you do something to earn it, it can't be a gift. Got it? So the Bible said salvation is a gift. Okay, brother, you can sit down. Now look, look here this morning. Salvation is a gift. I heard about this fellow one time. Uh, he, he was a very sophisticated man. It was years ago, was over in another country. And he come to the preacher and he said, uh, this is a long time ago. He said, uh, I think I'll go to heaven when I die. And the preacher said, hey, you know that? He said, well, I built this beautiful church. He said, I financed it with my own money. 14,000 pounds, that their, their money turned out, like we'd say $14 million or something. 14,000 pounds, and I built this beautiful church. He said, don't you think I'll go to heaven for that? And the preacher said, do you honestly think God would sell you a part of heaven for 14,000 pounds? No. Heaven's not for sale. It's not for sale. It's a gift. It's a gift. Being saved is a gift. You know what people think? People all over this town, if you, you don't believe it, go out and ask. Call a thousand people and they say, what do you do to go to heaven? And they say, be good. Be good. Be good is an old country. Say. People say it out here in the country. You know, when we was growing up, you'd go see Mamma and you'd go see the aunt, so-and-so and everything. And when they all get in the car, they'd say, now, youngs, be good. Remember, everybody used to say that. Just a figure of speech, but they, they ain't good. We ain't good. They wasn't good. Nobody was good. The Bible said there's none good. There is none good. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And this, this man said, you ain't going to buy heaven for no 14,000 pounds. Another preacher came one time, and he told this preacher, or a guy came to the preacher one time, and he said, now, preacher, he said, um, he said I think you talk too much about Jesus dying on the cross. He said, Jesus dying on the cross and, and Jesus shedding his blood. He said, that's a little too, that's, a, that's just, he said, why don't you preach a more up-to-date Jesus? Talk about the Jesus that come and set an example for us and set an example uh, for us. He said, and the preacher said, no, I preach him as your Savior. He said, well, I want you to preach him as an example. He said, okay, we'll do that. We'll start with 1 Peter 2, 2. Jesus did no sin. Can you follow him in that example? And the guy said, no, I can't. I've sinned. And he said, well, you better take him as Savior then. You better take him as Savior. Now listen, folks. Jesus was the greatest example ever. But I'm not saved because I'm trying to follow his example. I'm not, I don't accept him as my example. At first, I accept him as my Savior. My Savior from hell. 
I'm going to heaven because I've accepted the free gift. That's right. That's right. And I want to say salvation is a gift. Secondly, secondly, I want to say this. Why salvation must be a gift. Now the Bible said Adam sinned. By one man's disobedience, death came on everybody. When Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, sin got in their bloodstream. And he gave it to his kids, 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 gotten your mom and daddy, and gotten you, and gotten your kids, and me, and my kids, grandkids. That's where we got it. So the only way we can go to heaven is that if God does something for us to get us out of our sin. He, a man is spiritually dead. You know what salvation is? Salvation is not uh, is something that you can do. We don't, we don't need reformation. We don't need rehab. We don't need, uh, about it. look, there's nothing wrong with reforming and re- rehabilitating and all that. Rehab can help, but that don't make you saved. Look, I'm a sinner, right? I get all messed up, and I say, I'm going to quit my running around, I'm going to quit my drinking, and I'm going to quit my stealing, and I'm going to quit, and I'm going to do the best I can. Guess what? I'm still dead spiritually inside. See, what if I say, I'm going to join the church. Sign me up, preacher. Put me on the roll. I want to be a a Baptist. I want to be a, you know what that'll do? That'll just make you another dead Baptist. You're dead inside. You're spiritually dead. The Bible said we were dead in trespasses and sins. You say, well, I'll just get baptized. All you'd be doing is going down a dry center and coming up a wet center. That's the only difference, wet and dry. It does not one thing for your record. It does not one thing for your soul. You say, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell everything I've got and give it to the poor. And I, That's good, but you're still the same inside. You must be born again, buddy. You've got to, start, you've got to make that fresh start, invite Christ into your life, if you want to phrase it that way, trust him for what he's done for you, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why salvation must be a gift. Not reformation, not rehab, not joining the church, not being confirmed, not being, you, you just be an educated sinner, but still a sinner. Not being a church member, that just make you a respectable sinner, but not still a sinner. You must be born again. Now, let me say third. Number three, sometimes men treat gifts very lightly. I don't know why, but for some reason there's something in our nature that a lot of times we treat gifts very lightly. You ask somebody, say, hey, you want to get saved? And they say, well, what about the hypocrites in the church? And we say, well, what in the world's that got to do with anything? Like it. What if I said this? Jeff, you want $10? He said, well, what about all these hypocrites? What about them? <laughs> Who cares, man? Take it, right? Take it. I say, Jeff, Jeff, you want ten dollars? And I hand him like, what if he says? Well, what about all the people in the world that hadn't heard that? Every time somebody says, "What about the heathen that don't know?" I look at him and say, "Well, what about you heathen that do know? You better quit worrying about them that don't know. How about you that do know? You know what you ought to do, you sorry rascal. You know good and well uh, what's right and what's wrong. Amen. What if I say, all right, Jeff Rope, here's ten dollars, and he said. Well, well I just, how do you know which religion's right? Don't worry about it. Just take it and hush. Go buy you a milkshake, brother. Uh, I mean, have fun with that. Go to cookout. And I, listen, people, J- Jesus said, I offer you to eternal life. And people say, what about these people? Go to church. What about that preacher? Run off with a piano player. What about that? She better not try nothing like that. <laughs> I'm just kidding you. But uh, what about that deacon that stole my money? What about that Sunday school teacher turned out to be a liar? And every, what about them? What about them? There are thousands of fakes. There are thousands of hypocrites. So what? I'm going to take the free gift. I'll take, buddy, I'll take my seat in heaven. I, I know a deal when I see one, and that is a deal. That's right. Men often treat gifts lightly. Number four, a gift must be accepted. A gift must be accepted. It is not 
finalized until it is accepted. This gift is completely centered in the Lord Jesus Christ and his death on the cross for our sins on Mount Calvary. I can never do enough. God don't expect me to, but I accept the free gift of God. When I was 18 years old, up there at Nebo Baptist Church, I fell on my face one night and I was bawling my eyes out. There was people in the altar you from one side of that church to the other and I went and got saved that night and that night I accepted the gift of God. I said, I want the free gift, Lord. And I didn't know them words to say, but in my heart, I accepted the free gift. And you know what the Lord did? He gave it to me. He gave it to me. He gave it to me. It's unconditional. He gave me eternal life. And you, you, you meet me a 10 million years from now and I'll still be alive. Not here, not in this old body, in my brand new one over there on the other side with the Lord. A gift must be accepted. A, uh, uh, I read the story about uh, Deion Sanders. Some of you young people don't remember Deion Sanders, great athlete. Football, baseball. Back years ago, Deion Sanders was like, I mean, he was the, the king of sports. Right? They called him... They called him uh, Prime Time Sanders. They called him Neon Dion. Y'all remember that? Some of y'all remember? Neon Dion. And he was absolutely on top of the world. And he said these people went to a stadium to watch him play one day. And this man took his daughter and, some, and they went and they started seeing signs on the side of the interstate. And they started seeing signs right there on, on, on billboards and over bridges, neon, 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 neon. See the greatest athlete of all time. And she said, what's a neon, neon? And her daddy said, it ain't a what, it's a who. It's an athlete. He's the greatest. He's a multimillionaire. Back then, uh, they wasn't rolling in millions of minutes like a lot of them do now. And Deion Sanders was on the field that day, and they said, Later, they didn't know it, but she said they looked there and they looked at him like, there he is, there he is. Oh, and you love it. He has got it made. The whole world, cameras on him everywhere he goes. Snap his fingers, have anything he wants, anything to eat, anything to drive, any girlfriend, any pleasure, any building, any trip, any travel. He got it made. He's got it made. You know what they didn't know? That inside Deion Sanders' heart, he was falling apart. And he wrote, Deion Sanders said, my whole life was falling apart. He said, my stepdaddy died. And he said, my wife was divorcing me. And he said, I got suicidal. There's a great lesson right there, people. Great lesson. Don't look at them Hollywood movie stars like, oh, them lucky dogs. They gotta, you don't never know what kind of hell they're living in. Look, they're people just like us. They hurt just like us. They get scared. They get lonely just like all the rest of us. They put their britches on the same way as me and you do. And Deion Sanders' life was falling apart. He's wanting to kill himself. Here they all saying, there he is, there he is on his autograph. There he is. And the guys want to kill himself. And they said it got worse and he sat on the bench and all the other players watched him as he took a bottle of tying all three and downed the whole thing. Big strong man like that hadn't been strong right, killed him. And they all sat and watched him and they said, well, I ain't going to say nothing to him. I mean, that's Deion Sanders, man. I, and they watched him kill, kill all them, tying all three, a whole bottle of it. They said, man, what's up with him? And he said, I was trying to hold it together. I was trying to be the life of the party. They expected me to keep everybody happy and everybody going. I was the catalyst of our team. I kept everybody excited. I was always the, the joke, come on, come on, boys, let's go. And he said, I was putting on a big act. And he said, somebody, somebody got a hold of him and got that Bible and give him the gospel. And they said, they give old Deion Sanders Romans 10, 9. And he said, when they read that, Romans 10, 9, you know what Romans 10, 9 said? It said that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and you'll believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. And let me tell you what he said. Quote, he said, them words hit me like a ton of bricks. He said, when that man read that scripture to me, it was like, bam. He said, that's for me. 
that was meant for me. He said, I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. He accepted what Jesus had done for him on the cross and he went and told his buddy, he said, I did it, I did it. They said, you did what, Dion? He said, I got saved. And he did. And his life changed. And he said, I want to tell everybody. And he said, God give me new life. What money couldn't do. What girls couldn't do. What the fame and fortune couldn't do. And, and stardom couldn't do. The Lord give him the free gift, brother. And that made all the difference in his life. Amen. And you know what Jack Higgins said, the writer who was writing about him at that time? He said, what all them people find out, all those movie stars and everything, he said, what I find out is when you get to the top, there ain't nowhere else to go. Listen, when you get to the top, most people say, I'd give anything in the world to have that, have this. Uh, when you get to the top, there ain't nothing out there. Then people climb Mount Everest. The first time they said they got up there and said, well, here we are, top of the world. Looked around a little bit and said, let's go down. Ain't nothing to do up here. Awful lonely up there at the top. <laughs> Amen. He took the gift. I'll say number five, and I'm done. A gift, listen to this, is only offered for a limited time. A gift is only offered for a limited time. You say, well, Brother Danny, I always, no, uh-uh, your time's running out to get this one. You ever, you ever got a coupon or something and found it and said, oh my goodness, there's a free this, there's a free that. And you look and say, offer expired, July 31st. Ain't no good. The offer's expired. The free gift is, is done run out. Or, or, you, or you get something in the mail or something, they're offering something at work or something said, the offer expires August 31st or 30th, whatever. Uh, that said the offer expires in September, whatever. You know what? God give you a certain amount of time. Everybody in here. God give you a certain amount of time to settle things with him. He's willing to give you eternal life. You can live in heaven forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And ever. But you have a certain amount of time to do it in. You listen? Two people die every second. 120 people die Every minute. 7,500 die every hour. 178,000 people die a day. And 65 million people die a year. That means while I'm up here preaching this morning, over 3,000 people have left this world. Gone. It's up. And if you don't go to heaven, you go to hell. There's no in between. There ain't no such thing as purgatory. In the Bible, there's heaven, there's hell. And there's people that died while I'm preaching here today that lift up their eyes in torture and saying, oh God, oh God, I'll, I'll go to church. God, I'll, I'll do it. God, I'll do it. He said, you had your time. You had your time run out. Your time run out. I've, I've used this illustration many times before. I'll, I'll put you on this scale and show you where you're at. Let's just say, let's say that you're, bo uh, you're born at 7 o'clock in the morning. You're born at 7 o'clock in the morning, and you live your whole life at 35, and then you die at 70. Most of you probably won't make it that long. We don't know. None of us know. Let's just say, let's just say you die at 70. Now, you're going to compare that to a day, your whole life. 7 o'clock in the morning. If you, is, is, have all y'all ever been up at 7 o'clock in the morning, stayed up to 11 o'clock at night? Sure you have. I hope some of y'all. I think you think God flips the switch on the sun and turns it on at 9.30. But, but it, 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 it comes up gradually. And uh, if you got up at 7 o'clock in the morning and died at 11 at night, right? I'm going to show you where you're at. Everybody listening? If you were born at 7, you're going to die at 11 o'clock tonight. Your whole life is like one day. If you're 15 years old, it's 10.25 a.m. It's already time to take a break if you're at work. If you're 20 years old, it's 11.34. 
If you're 25, it's 18 minutes to one. Already past lunchtime if you're 25. And you'll die at 11 tonight. If you're 30, it's nine minutes till two. If you're 35, halfway, three o'clock. You're halfway. If you're 40, it's 4.08 in the afternoon. If you're 45, it's 16 minutes after 5 in the evening. Now you think of a day, 7 in the morning to 11 at night, and it's 15 after 5 at evening. That's how much time you've got. If you're 50, it's 6.25. If you're 55, it's 7.34. If you're 60, it's 18 minutes till 9. If you're 65, it's nine minutes till 10 in the evening, if you're 65. And if you're 70, you're gone. Many live past 70, many don't. That's average. Time's running out. Your time to do business with God is running out. Time is short. Eternity's long. Heaven's hot, heaven's, heaven's beautiful, hell's hot, and heaven is wonderful. And there's only one way to get to heaven, one door. Like you came in that door here this morning, Jesus is the door to heaven. Take the free gift. I want you to stand, please. Miss Desi's going to come. Play softly on the piano, every head bowed. And I want every eye closed this morning. Every head bowed and every eyes closed. No one's talking. No one's moving. Complete silence, quietness right now. Do you need to do business with God? Because see, we're all just standing in line waiting on our turn to leave this world, people. We're all just standing in line. It's born in a man wants to die. It's our turn. It's going to be my turn. It's going to be your turn. Right now, right now, while our heads are bowed and eyes closed, we'll not have any singing. Not have, we're just, this is the invitation. If you want to publicly trust the Lord Jesus Christ to be your personal son, take the gift, just like I gave it to Jeff Rose a while ago. You'll take that gift. On, just come down here, let's get down on your knees, and let's settle this between you and God. If you need to come, come right now. Right now, just right now, just get out of your seat. He wasn't ashamed of you when he died on that cross out there in broad daylight. Let him beat him, mock him, make fun of him, stripped his clothes off and laughed at him. Don't be ashamed. But trust him in front of the whole world. Just slip out of your seat, come. Right now, right now, anyone, right now. If you need to come, if you need to come, come on. Maybe you're here this morning and you say, Preacher, I know I've been saved, but I've, I've really made a mess out of things. And, Right now, I'm going to get my life right with God. I'm going to get right with the Lord. Just slip out of your seat and come right now. Come on. Let's get down here and pray. Let's obey God. The Spirit of God speaking to hearts right now. He's speaking to somebody right now. I guarantee it. Some's come. Others need to come. Others are coming. If you need to come this morning, it'd be a good time to just slip right out of your seat. You say, Preacher, I need to get back in there. I need to get back in there. I need to get back on fire for God. I've let the devil trip me up. I've let the devil trip me up. Make that step. Make that step you need to make right now. Do it right now. Do it right now for Jesus' sake. 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 Right sake. Others oh, still coming. We'll wait just a few seconds. Tarry here just a few seconds while some still praying. You boys deaf. Amen. Amen. Y'all praying with this man. Others need to come. Amen. 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 Keep praying. It's a free gift. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Others are coming. Amen. Amen, y'all. 
settle it. You'll be glad you did one day. You'll be glad you did when it comes time to die. When it comes time to die, give me Jesus, buddy. Amen. So I'm still praying this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May God speak to hearts here. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for what you've done here this morning. Thank you for the encouraging, the good singing, the good fellowship. Thank you for our, our church building. The doors are open. We got air conditioned. There's not, not armed guards and soldiers out there waiting on us this morning to kill us or take us to prison like they are in some countries. We thank you for our freedom. Help us not to take it for granted, but to appreciate what you've done for us here in this country. I pray, Lord, that you'd help us to live right every single day. Lord, we ought to be shouting the victory this morning for how good you've been to us. Have your way in our lives. Do what needs to be done in every life. Lord, I pray that you'd move in here and get ready for the big youth service tonight. May the Holy Spirit of God come and do a great work. And God, help these to come this, this morning. Give them peace and victory. And I pray for that one that still may be struggling. Lord, that you'd bless them. And whatever you do, we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Amen.